So this section of chapter six is uh, really a special case of uh, the previous section, 6.4. Our situation is that we're interested in a random variable w, which is g of x, y, and we want to find the CDF of w, and of course, take a derivative to find the PDF of w. But in fact, uh, uh, that was the topic of the last session, but, but here we're going to just look at the PDF of the sum. So, so g of x and y is just simply x plus y. And uh, this is important because uh, there are many engineering situations where, where we are adding random variables together and then making decisions. Uh, uh, for instance, taking an average involves taking the sum of two numbers and dividing by two. But the important thing that's going on is taking the sum and understanding what happens to the randomness in that sum. So uh, previously, we've also looked at the sum of x plus y, and we've uh, learned about the expected value of x plus y being the sum of the expected values. And we've learned that the variance of the sum is sum of the variances plus two times the covariance. Uh, here, we're really focusing on uh, distribution functions of the sum, uh, which is kind of the, the final step where we get a complete understanding of the sum of two random variables. So right out of the gate, we, uh, we hit you with kind of a strong theorem. The theorem says that the PDF of W is the result of doing a, a line integral on the joint PDF. And the key idea in this joint PDF is that uh, we take x and we add y, but y is equal to w minus x. So in fact, this is x plus w minus x, and it's equal to w. So what we're doing is uh, we integrate the, the joint PDF along the line where x plus y equals w. And uh, this can be transformed by a variable change into the integral over y. And now we integrate over y, but x is equal to w minus y. So once again, x plus y is equal to w. So for the derivation of this, um, we go back to first principles. We, uh, we think about finding this CDF, the probability w is less than or equal to w. And then we draw an xy plane. Here is x, here is y. And this is the probability x plus y is less than or equal to w. And then the next step is you look at at this line, and you look and say, oh, this is the straight line where x plus y is equal to w. It crosses here at the place where x is w and y is 0, and it crosses here where y is w and x is 0. And uh, the region that we're interested in is all x's and y's that are down below this line because the line is x plus y equals w, but our probability of interest is x plus y less than or equal to w. So we can set this up with calculus. And by calculus, this is equal to the integral over x's from minus infinity to infinity. And then we have to integrate uh, uh, y from minus infinity up to uh, the line x plus y equals w. And when we do that, so you integrate y from minus infinity to w minus x, f of x, y, x and y, dy, dx. 
without any specific information about the uh, exact joint PDF that we're working with, we can't go any farther than this in terms of finding the joint CDF. Uh, so if we want to find the PDF, we have to go just simply take a derivative of this function. So this is d d w of this double integral. And here we have a place where uh, this is either very tricky or very easy. If you're really good at uh, multivariable calculus and, and you remember your theorems of calculus, you'll know that you can bring this d dw inside this integral. And uh, that's because this thing integrates to one over all x and y. And then when you take a derivative of this inner integral, right? In fact, it's the function inside evaluated at this upper limit. And so what you obtain is uh, equal to minus infinity to infinity f of x, y, x. And the y is evaluated at w minus x this upper limit and then dx. And so here what we see is that we obtain the version of this integral that's the first version, the integral over x. If we set things up in reverse and we instead had integrated and made the dx be uh, the inner integral, uh, then the limits would have gone to w minus y, and eventually we would have arrived at the second expression. Finally, it's worth noting that unless we know something more about the joint PDF of x and y, you can't simplify this expression. You're simply stuck with it. So here are the same steps, just typeset a little more nicely. So this is a pretty good example of our theorem. We have a joint PDF of x and y, and there's three constraints of interest. The first is that y is between 0 and 1, and the next is between 0 and 1. And then uh, this PDF happens to be subject to the sum constraint that x plus y is less than or equal to 1. So you have a picture that looks like this. And this is a perfect symmetric triangle, although it doesn't show in my drawing. And uh, the PDF is two over this triangular region. And the theorem says that uh, the PDF of W, which is the sum of X and Y, is equal to the integral minus infinity to infinity the joint PDF at x and w minus x dx. And when you look at this integral, you realize this is a different integral for every value of w. And uh, the w's of interest are, of course, corresponding for to w's between 0 and 1, specifically for a w between um, I'm sorry, zero and two. For example, here's a W pair. What we're doing is we're integrating along the line in the xy plane where x varies and y is equal to W minus x. We're integrating along this line. And of course, uh, this joint PDF is, um, is zero except in this region. So it's uh, the integral is only non-zero over, over this shaded zone across the triangle. So when we when we do some more algebra, you get this is equal to the integral zero to 
the W, so X goes from zero to W, and, uh, and over that region, the PDF is two DX, and we obtain two W. So I have to emphasize that this is the right integral for W between zero and two. So for instance, uh, if we looked at the case where W is greater than two, then we would be integrating over this blue line, but uh, this blue line doesn't cross any region of the XY plane where this joint PDF is non-zero. And so for, for W uh, greater than two, the value of this integral is zero. And similarly, for, uh, for W less than zero, we would have a situation, I should draw some more, but like this, this for example is an example where, this is where X plus Y is equal to W, but W is less than zero. And then once again, this line, right, doesn't cross the region where this PDF was non-zero. And so again, we obtain uh, zero. So we have a complete expression here. We get FW of W is equal to two W, zero less than or equal to W less than or equal to two, and zero otherwise. And in some way, this should make some nice sense. Uh, uh, we'll see this maybe on a neat and tidier uh, picture on the next slide. So, so this is the same solution. And, um, and what we see is that the PDF of W uh, grows linearly with W. So uh, uh, the density of values of W are growing linearly, and it's because uh, as W grows, this line segment grows in proportion to W. Uh, when W is twice as long, uh, twice as big, the line segment is twice as long. And the probability of being along that line segment is twice as large. So of course, this section is focused on the special case of the random variable W that's the sum of X plus Y. And uh, we've derived some specialized methods that go directly to finding the PDF of W. Uh, but in fact, uh, we want to specialize this even more to the case where um, X and Y are independent. Uh, as I said, sums of random variables are, are super important in various probability applications. And uh, in fact, sums of independent random variables are perhaps the most important case of sums of random variables. So, uh, so some examples would include X is the signal that your phone receives from a cellular base station, and Y would be, be the noise random variable, and your phone gets the sum of those two things. And, and that was an example we talked about earlier where where the random variable of interest, the signal at the phone, is the sum of two independent random variables. So for independent random variables, the PDF of W has a particularly simple form, and the simple form is embodied in this theorem. So recall that the previous theorem said that the PDF of the sum W was integral minus infinity to infinity. We integrated the joint PDF of X and Y over all X with y equal to w minus x. But the thing to remember is that the joint PDF of x and y factors into the product of the marginal PDFs. And this is uh, when x and y are independent. Now we put this factorization here in for the joint PDF and we obtain 
the claim of the theorem Depending on your experience with other courses in the EE curriculum or, or perhaps with uh, differential equations, this form of integral where we have a factor uh, fx as a function of x and another function, which is a function of something minus x, in this case, w minus x, uh, may or may not look familiar. In fact, this is called the convolution of f, the PDF of x and the PDF of y. And uh, perhaps in a linear systems course, you saw that uh, the output of a linear time invariant filter was the convolution of of the input and the, the, uh, the filter impulse response. If you've seen this before, you know that these convolutional integrals are, are confusing. In fact, the word convolution comes from the same root of the word convoluted, which means kind of twisted around. And, and the reason things are twisted around is because we took this PDF of y and, and we reversed the, uh, its direction when we wrote minus x, and then we offset it by w. And then when you do this integral, um, it's surprisingly difficult to make sure that you have everything set up correctly. So uh, my suggestion is you, you, if you haven't practiced convolutional integrals at home, look at the, the homework problems in the book and try to do a few of them and, and and you have to kind of think hard about how to do this properly. So if you've practiced at home doing convolution, then you're probably ready to solve this quiz. It's fairly straightforward. I will say that it's a bit of a funny quiz because uh, the exponentials have different expected values. And uh, it gives a kind of a funny answer that you, uh, of a distribution you won't see in textbooks. Instead of uh, doing all of the algebra by hand on this slide, let's just look at the solution on the next slide. So from the problem statement, we know that x is exponential with parameter 3, so the expected value is 1 third. y is exponential with uh, parameter 2, so its expected value is 1 half. And uh, since x and y are non-negative, we know that w is non-negative. And so the PDF of w is going to be 0 for w less than 0. Finally, for w greater than 0, uh, we're going to use the theorem that we just derived. And the theorem says the PDF of w is the convolution of the PDF of x and the PDF of y. Now to go farther, we have to use our information we know about each of the PDFs. First, we recall that the PDF of y is zero for y less than zero. So this function is zero for y less than zero. And so this makes our starting point be y equals zero. Next, we observe that the PDF of x is zero uh, for x is less than zero. And so that the, this PDF is going to be zero when w minus y is negative. And what that implies is that this function goes to zero when y is greater than w. As a consequence, the upper limit of this integral is w. And now we just plug in the expression during from the interval from zero to w. So when we plug in this expression, this is, uh, there's a 3 e to the minus 3 w minus y. This was the PDF of x at w minus y. And there was a 2 e to the minus 2 y from the PDF of y. But the factors 2 and 3 that were in front of these, these functions, they were rolled into the 6 over here. Now, if you look at this integral, 
you have e to the minus this exponent and e to the minus that exponent. Combining the exponents, we have a e to the minus 3w and, uh, and a plus y. But uh, the e to the minus 3w is actually a constant with respect to this integral over y. So that factors out, and we're left with an integral 0 to y e to the y dy, which is pretty simple stuff. It's just e to the w minus 1. And when we're done, we get this uh, PDF. And as I said, it's kind of a funny PDF that's not a PDF you'll see in a textbook of anything. Um, if you're interested uh, and want to sort of solve a, uh, in some way, a simpler problem, but, but you'll get a surprising different answer, uh, you should solve the case where, uh, where uh, fx of x is equal to 2e to the minus 2x, x greater than or equal to 0, and 0 otherwise. This corresponds to the case when uh, x and y are both uh, the independent, but also identical. So they're IID. When you do that, uh, you'll get um, uh, a simpler answer that you might recognize. 